cameras now. Excellent stuff. Right, let's make a start on bar and down. We're going to jump in on the left hand with those chords that you just wrote down. You don't need to stare at them once you've got them up and running. And everything you can do in this lesson, you can do by ear as well. I I've made it specifically simple so that it entices you in to have a go of this stuff by ear. Because a lot of you did say in your emails that that's something that you want to work on, you want to help and, and get better at. So do make that decision yourself to do that and use the screen you've got me in front of you nice and clearly and that's a really good lesson as well just learning to watch the screen and reciprocate i know it's an ongoing process it is difficult in the beginning but it's a really good lesson when you are in a session when you are in workshops and you've got somebody there you can be watching them and absorbing stuff all the time okay so i'm just going to start put the tune out in the room and in the space and you can have a watch i'm only going to play the a music round and um um, instantly gone and forgotten the tune and what I was playing earlier has come back um, there we go okay bar and down So when you come back to the replay, you'll be able to have that right at the beginning, um, something that you can play along with, but we're going to go ahead and break it down now. So left hand only. Rhythm of this is we're working in three minims. That's the three, two. But mostly it's very much felt as six beats, six, four, I suppose, would be that, you know, sort of six crotchets. And it's much easier to get the rhythmical feeling in a 3-2 hornpipe if you break everything down and create micro beats. So I know a lot of you will have heard me mention this before, but if you haven't, micro beats is my term. It's a term that's used by a few different tutors. Just by slicing each beat in half and just creating two micro beats out of one. So normally we would count a 3-2 rhythm as 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. <coughs> but if we take into account the upward movement of my hand, the little upbeat if you like, you end up with 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 1, 2, 3 so you get this little excitable rise out of the rhythm. So that is definitely part of the rhythm and we need to be aware of that. And that in itself creates the six beats. One, two, three, four, five, six. However you want to count it doesn't matter. I sometimes say six, I sometimes say one and two and. And you then think of the and beats as being that backbeat, that uppy sort of lifting feeling. <laughs> The left hand rhythm plays heed to those micro beats. So what we're going to get used to doing here is droning our left hand along with the rhythm for certain elements of the beat, but also lifting them up. So usually as melodeon players, we're very good at putting fingers on buttons, but we don't always think about how to lift them off. And if we try to be very specific about that and very energized, like you've got a little electric shock that suddenly removed your hand, you get a very crisp, definite rhythm, which is what we want here. So just between the Ds, so we'll just take a bit of air in our bellows and starting at top D, 
what we're going to do is just practice droning for one, two, three, and lifting off on the three. Just going to build this rhythm up. One, two, three. One, two, three. Or one and two. One and two. One and two. Good. And what you want to listen out for... Can you hear that it's kind of like a small duck is living inside your melodeon and it's got this little quack as that palette thumps closed. As soon as you lift your fingers, that palette has a little thump. See if you can hear it. I'll not play for a second just so you can practice that. Just listening out for that little quack. <laughs> It might be, you know, it, every instrument is different, but most respond to that because of that wooden clack that you hear. Some will be more clacky than others if you're on a honer, for instance. A, a lot of us here, I think, are on Castagnari boxes, but it's still there. Tiny little duck. So listen out for that. That's what you want from that upward motion. And if you don't hear it, try to be more abrupt with the way you leave the key. Yeah. OK, so I'm going to continue with this rhythm. Those are the on beats that we create. So we're on on the one and we're off on the two. But the next stabs that we have are on the off beats, those little upward beats that we had. So you end up with one and two and three and. One and two and three and. Okay. One and two and three and. One and two and three and. Just going to come back to the share. Keep noodling away as I talk. This is the beauty of online stuff. You can keep playing while I talk. I'm going to come back to this because now... Oh, giving the game away there with sheet music. If I come back to this, this is what we were just playing. It might help some of you to see this on the screen. So what I've just counted out is the one and two and three and, or one, two, three, four, five, six. Feel free to print this and change it if that makes it easier. And these visual blue boxes, that's showing you the blocks of sound that you're creating by holding it, droning, and then lifting it. And then the on and the off are literally directions for your left hand to come on and then off, on, off on off and hopefully as you can see those blue boxes get progressively shorter across the bar so that's just one bar of accompaniment on the left hand so you start off with one and two and three and and then you end up with that very very short little stab at the end one and two and three and and then it, the and is like a half so you're only pressing for literally a stab and on off half of that last beat one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three going between top and bottom D. I'll keep playing this to give you best chance. coming together. 
Just a little bit longer. Really want this to get into the bones. So it's a bit trance-like when we just keep repeating it. It's like, hopefully, and I'll ask you in a second, we'll have a bit of a chat. Hopefully you maybe muddle through and then you've got it. And then your brain is like, yeah, I've got it. Next thing. I want the next new bit of information. But actually just sitting with that and keeping on going, it puts it deeper and deeper into your muscle memory, which is what obviously the aim of the game is. And if we can get that left hand deeper in the in your muscle memory... It becomes something that you don't later have to think about that much, hopefully. So when we start adding the new information here, the body will be like, oh yeah, I can keep that going. We did loads of that, I remember that. And it might be that you have to do various different sessions just on that rhythm, moving around the chords. But that's the beauty of left-hand practice, is that it, it later gives rest to that side of your brain that can then focus on other details like bringing both hands together, which we, as we know, is the crux of this instrument. Um, so just, just a quick kind of yay or nay, like how did that feel? Did you, did you hear a sound in your instrument that you've not heard before with that little quacking noise? Were you able to get it to do that? Have a, a mute and talk to me if, uh, if in case you're talking to yourself. <laughs> uh, so Mel. I I don't know if I've got this right because the only person in here the crap that I'm making is me. Okay. But Just it feels like I'm making a, dub, a, a, a I'm making a three legs W with, with the then a two legs W then a, a U. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. I get that. I know what you mean. Uh, one. Don't. Don't. Hang on. Hang yeah. On. Yes. Good. Is that okay? All you need to do is move the first W right up against the next W so that there's no gap. So you've got the exact beautiful sound. Go immediately into that middle W. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's that's how I'm trying to... Um... Really nice. Okay. Actually, okay. what Min's got there is the next step I was going to mention. And a few of you have heard me talk about this, but the little tiny bellows waggle. I know, Louise, we did some of this, and um, John as well. We did a bit of this at some of the Halsey classes, and I know, Min, we've done some in one-to-ones. Um, haven't yet looked at this on Patreon, and I might not, may or may not, but just a really gentle little bounce in the bellows. And what that leaves you with is a really gentle undercurrent of, like, a pulse that everything else bobs along on. So it's adding to those micro beats. But they are just the micro beats. We're not kind of dividing micro beats it's just bobbing along one two three four five six this is a bit of an extended kind of technique if it's really confusing and your body is fighting against it just kind of park it to one side for the moment but give it a go i want you to really relax your shoulders and everything down to the ground and then we just want to pick up from the elbow. So don't let your shoulders rise, but just pick up from the elbow as if you've got a piece of string and somebody's just pulled your arm up. So it's still kind of hanging quite loosely. So when you put it in the strap, obviously there's more things holding it, but there's still that feeling of relaxed heaviness in the hand. But because somebody is bobbing you along on that piece of string, I want that left hand just to gently move up and down. So there's no side to side. You're not pushing and pulling. You're just bobbing up and down. And what you'll find is that you, your instrument arcs. You know, if we if we apply a little bit of gentle pressure with no buttons open, the instrument shouldn't move, hopefully, if it's not leaky. But what you'll find is that it kind of arcs around that pressure in the middle. It's like a balloon, a water balloon that you're moving around. So that's where that bobbing action comes from. But we don't want it to do the whole arc because that would look mental. Um, we don't we don't need it to do that. But we just want to bob on that 
outside of the arc. That's so instead of all the way round, it's just like a very, very little tiny oscillation. I love using that word if I can get it in. And it should feel like effortless. Now I don't want this to be hard work on top of everything else that you're thinking about. If you now apply a sound, can you hear the really subtle little movement? So I'm just going to mute you up just um, just while you're doing that. It shouldn't feel too heavy. We're talking like a little like hum, my I I I I, like a little tiny vibrato in there. So you'll get these little waves of volume and that's what Min was describing with those W shapes. So I've talked, I, I do talk about it a lot as, as sort of W shapes and you get these peaks and troughs of volume and, um, and, and it really helps you to kind of create that visual. Now in this rhythm, the hand, the fingers aren't down all the time. So we're actually like cutting off some of these W's they become separate but that pattern of movement doesn't change that's consistent it's just that our fingers are coming down and up or on and off at different points along this bobbing sequence i hope that i hope we're following that so really slowly so that we can try and do both at the same time i want you to play this rhythm along with me now so we'll do one bar on the push and then one whole bar on the pull all right if you're not understanding me, I'll shut up and I'm just going to play it round and round and round. All right. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pull. Push. Pull. Little bit quicker. Good. Keep noodling around it if you want. Don't let me stop you just because I have. But hopefully what you're finding, if you're managing to get all of that coordination together, and please don't worry if you're not because you've got time with the replay and you know we, you have time in between now and then. Um, but what you should be able to find is that some of those micro beats are coming on with the sound. You're coming down. So when the bellows are landing down, the fingers are landing down. But also on some of those beats, the fingers are coming up and they move up and away from the keyboard as that bellows, little the little waggle rises. So it naturally has lift. And that's what we're talking about when, when we're talking about lift in a tune. It's usually just for me and the way I contextualise it in my playing, it's actually lifting the fingers a lot more energetically than we would normally like if we're pushing a button to make a sound thinking about how you end the sound is really important just like it is as to when you start the sound okay so we're gonna we're gonna over this block of classes we're gonna play around with this concept a lot so if it's new to you don't worry if it's like oh i don't know if i'm getting this we're gonna take some time with it because it's something that really becomes like a foundation of your next level playing as well as just 
broadening repertoire and learning more tunes it's nice to know some extra techniques that you can use with your old stuff like a speed the plow or winston gallop all of this on and off this lift is so important for all music but particularly the tunes that you might have neglected for a little while so taking this stuff away and playing with other tunes is you know top top advice is that i can that i can give right any other comments or queries there is that starting to become a little bit more clear in your physicality can you kind of feel yourself getting to grips with that or anything else you want to add do unmute and let me know i think um i remember someone telling me about um taking your fingers off the buttons as if they were hot and you were burning yourself so it's just that flick off definitely it and that's i I always neglect to say that analogy because I, I've used it a lot, you know, in my own playing. It's a good reminder. Mm. If you notice yourself being a bit sluggish, just think, I've got a red hot keyboard. I can't, you know, burn my fingers. Um, so, you know, the way that you would react to something red hot is how you want to be reacting in this stage. Um, and it's good to have that incredible contrast between making a sound and finishing a sound. And there are degrees of softness that you can experiment with, but in the beginning, treating it as if it's red hot it trains your body to have that reflex response which is what we are aiming for okay let's just keep this going on the left hand for a bit longer um but start to now go around this chord sequence okay so we'll just take the first two bars of what you've got written down so the first bar is okay and then the second bar is going to be D, D, and then a very, very stabby A on the end. So out of the three sounds in the bar, the first two are D and the very last one is A. So you've just got that little pull at the very end of the rhythmical sequence. Again, if you don't understand the words, I'll shut up and we'll play it. And then you'll start to see and hear it. Um. Okay, let's go for this then. And we'll just take a pause and reset and just get used to all of this new information that we're taking on. Nice bit of air in the bellows because we are going to be pushing for most of this sequence. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll make a big statement on that A. We're going to hold it for a little bit longer. It's a, a kind of a slight modification on that particular point of the tune because of what happens here. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm sorry, I was doing something in 5-4 earlier with the advanced group and I seem to be a bit muddled with my rhythm. I'm going to really concentrate on it. <laughs> okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, flavor of both hands together but just stick with the left for now we're going to go to bar three and four and just look now at how this g to e is going to work okay so 
if we're using three fingers, which I really hope we are, we could be using four, and if we are, that's fine too. But essentially, with playing a G, with your ring and your middle finger, or your little and ring, you'll have a spare finger at some point here, and it's just ready and waiting to play the E. Um, and it will be on the same point as the A, so it will be G and then that. It's very kind of quick, it's a transition sound. So just sort of set your hand up and have a little fertile around there. Feel that E bass and try to keep the finger roughly in position, if not just hovering, literally touching without pressing, so that you know it's there ready and waiting, so that you can play that G. And then it's ready and waiting for that E. Okay, and we'll just stab it because that's all it's going to be. All right, so same thing again. I'll count us in. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. Same again. Okay, let's build into bar four now. So we go back to the G afterwards. Okay, so what you'll find is when the melody does come in at this point, you'll have to chop up the left hand slightly in, in the rhythmical sense. But for the moment, we'll just hold solid sounds. And actually, for the first time, we actually play a three, a true three, two pattern. So we play three minims on the left hand. And this is where you get that chonky kind of fee, fi, fo, fum. Everything lands on one of the on beats, the one, two, three. So the G, A, D. So it's not following the rule of that accompaniment that we, the, the, the sort of the, the droning accompaniment. It has its own very even rhythm. One, two, three, four, five, six. But it still works over the micro beats. It's just, it will feel like different, okay? following just a thumbs up thumbs down if you know if you're not following i can we're going to recap it all anyway not a problem bro so we're going to do bar three into bar four that bottom line of chords so this is where you might find that you get a bit discombobulated because you're doing one rhythm into the another so just you're, you're in control and i'm going to loop this round nice and slow lots of times so it's going to give you that opportunity to jump back on board as many times as you need okay so one two three four five six one, two, one, two, one. same again two three four so 
don't worry if you miss the E minor, like I did. It's not imperative, but you know, you will need something on the pull there, basically. So I just shoved an E in. Same thing again, correct this time. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Just a chance there to play left against right. So not you playing right hand, but you accompanying my right hand. So that mentally you can hear both parts, but you're not physically having to make that happen. But your brain is starting to stitch both together. And maybe for some of you, you saw the small changes I had to make, like chopping the A because there's a pull, push, pull. Maybe you just naturally started to follow that on screen. If you didn't, watch out for it in the replay. Because if you can just kind of get into that zone in your head where you can just softly focus your eyes following what I'm doing, it will. it's kind of a hack. Consciously, you don't have to deal with it in your front brain, but your back brain can sort of just be putting the pieces together without you realising but you have to be more relaxed. So if you're stressed out or, you know, the brain is busy on work, you know, working on tasks in the background, it, it won't necessarily happen. So try to come to your replay sessions with a clear mind. Give yourself that time. You know, you are allowed to take 10 minutes out of the day for melodium practice. You're allowed to take a lot longer if you have it. <laughs> but, you know, 10, 15 minutes would be great on like a little exercise like this on this left hand. Okay. Let's play all of that left hand together a few times through. I know I'm spending a lot of time on left hand, but I do have a plan, don't worry. And I hope it's working for you to feel this coming together rhythmically with that little bellows waggle as well. I'm going to play the right hand along just so you can start to hear how both go together. And yeah, see if you can put some of those things I just mentioned into practice, like really watching the screen and just seeing what your body wants to respond to naturally. Don't worry if it responds in the wrong way. Don't punish yourself. It's fine. Just jump back on and keep trying. All right. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs>
hopefully you can always pause this point and go back and do all of that again in the replay absolutely pause play without me um, you know make, make use of the video I'd like you to be playing along with the video as much as possible but you might always need that little moment of own headspace so um, but it's so beneficial playing along with a sound source for obvious reasons but I'll list them anyway session playing playing in workshops keeping time like watching and playing and learning all of that will be going on even if it's tricky it will get easier and easier like chipping away at, you know a piece of um, rock that you're trying to carve into a beautiful shape um, so yeah make use of the video how did that feel playing along with me playing the melody were you able to keep up and make yourself kind of cajole that hand into submission um i kept missing i kept not finding that e is it the e ah yeah <laughs> that's little e that one place. yeah that one kept disappearing <laughs> yeah so it, was it a matter of that index finger might have been kind of stuck yeah stuck? because i was sort of concentrating and then i had taken it a bit too far away and then i couldn't i was thinking where on earth has it gone to <laughs> yeah now, what I will say about that E is it's an option. There's kind of a question mark over it. It doesn't have to be an E. And if you, if it, you know, I'd say practice it. Don't let yourself get away with it. But if you would prefer to have an A, that can work as well. Absolutely. The only reason I chose the E is because it's something different because you end up going to the A at bar four. And I don't it's a personal thing it, honestly there's no right or wrong here but you might just find that your index is hovering quite naturally here rather than that extra stretch mm. so you can substitute and it, and it will work with the right hand too so you just have that <laughs> yeah just lots of thank you great um when it comes to chords um I really think that the, the world is your oyster, but you have to kind of learn what your oysters are first, right? You have to kind of like open them and go, ah, there's an E minor there. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Oh, well, I'll go for the A. But both you can, you know, you can have both. And I would say don't just, you know, not play the E because it's a bit more tricky. Um, you know, I would actually encourage you to practice to, to, to get that E. And then you've got it as an option later on. You can keep it up your sleeve if you ever need it and want it. Um, Colin, I want to ask you specifically, because I, I know that working with you one to one, left hand has always been a real bugger, to, to put it bluntly. Uh, how is it just focusing on, on this now for you? I'm struggling a bit at the minute, but I, as you say, I've got the video to go out in the week. So, uh, yeah. Cool. I'm glad to hear that, you know, th there's positivity to come out of this and, and, uh, I, I keep asking but I'm always happy to go slower so if if there is anyone out there that's like could you just slow it down because I think I'll get it that's also fine what I will say is the replay can be slowed down but I'm also happy to do it here live right now because you can speed up the replay as well <laughs> um I'm that's never you know don't fret that other people are going to get put out because there's probably someone else that wants it slower as well so always ask um we've got a bit of time left I'm I'm probably going to leave most of the A music learning to next week. So what I am going to suggest we do is just make use of the time to to keep going with this rhythm right now. Um, so I just want to give you guys the best opportunity. And again, it's a, essentially a simple task. It might not be simple right now, but all I'm asking you to do is play left hand. So it's just about breaking that down. All right. So let's just do all of that again, nice, and I'll go a little tiny bit slower. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six.
left hand really crisp. That down and up. Listening for those little quacks. Let's go again. Hopefully with that small tactical break between plays there, did you feel it coming even a little bit easier? Maybe that E happened once or that, you know, something happened there that didn't happen before that you can just take away as a massive positive. A lot of the time with Melodium, we have to celebrate the teensy positives, you know, because they all build up. Lucy, how's it fitting in for you? Is this something that's brand new in in sense of working on the left hand like this? Um, yeah, no, I have done it, but I just don't feel it. So it's it's just like I can't. Yeah. So the, uh, feeling that rhythm, that's the... hot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm so I'm sorry if you're getting a bit emotional. It's it's all right. Please don't. <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to. Um pick you, you just out have to keep doing it just over and over and over and over again yeah and also just listening to the source material because then it's like you have to kind of infect yourself with that bobbing rhythm also going slowly can sometimes take away from the the overall rhythm but it's a you're juggling I suppose I'm I'm not very used to using block chords yeah um that that feels quite strange you know I, yeah, yeah. You know, so like find, finding the E for me because I, you know, that first session with you, no problem at all. Yeah, that's and I play rule four fingers on my bass, so you know that's, you know, that's fine. But it's 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 the rhythm. I just don't. don't I find it so hard to distract, um, separate it from the tune. Yeah. So if I had the tune, then I'd know where it went. But just yeah. to just to play it is just yeah yeah when you sorry can i just when you go over it again when you sit quietly on your own and you go over and over it again it will come <laughs> Put in your gallery. we have to hope so definitely it and it, it's sometimes just a, being in a different headspace you can hear things differently and um and when you when we start working with the right hand next week um, you'll start to recognise what elements of that bit of the tune kind of are going together. Um, it's good. F this is this is good for me to realise that sometimes working in this way is it's just it doesn't actually become clear at you know at a later point. Sometimes it starts off like this and then it gets clearer. Um, I'd hoped that just by hearing the hearing me playing the left hand uh, the right hand would sh would kind of like really spark those moments in the tune. And I did think about bringing the right hand in today and I thought it could send a lot of other things wobbling around because it's a peculiar rhythm. It is very strange. It is, in, it is a syncopated rhythm as well, which is a kind of extra level of, co of control that we need. Mm. And it's not necessarily pulling out the beats in the in the melody that we would naturally want to pull out. It, you know, a lot of times with three, two hornpipes, um, that there's a natural tendency to to not pull out the in between beats. It's kind of more like da ba ba dum da da da, just just sticking on the three, which isn't necessarily wrong at all. And it's probably more kind of you know classic. Um, but there's more fun to be had by kind of delaying essentially da da ba dum da 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 da, and it just plays with the melody in a different way. 
Um, uh, so, so please don't feel disheartened by today or like it's been useless. I'm really pleased that you stayed and you've kept on working at it. There's the, the determination that I you know, can feel from you. Yeah, a round of applause. Um, so please just come back and use the replay and keep listening. So if, if even if you're not able to pick up the Belodian, find the video that I posted and just, just listen to it over and over again and see if you can just bob in your own body or sort of clap or tap something along to those little mm. six beats. And then you, you, it's all just about feeding that information and programming your muscle memory to just comply. It's like, this is the job I want you to be able to pick up. I'm just going to keep bobbing along until you get it. Um, and it'll be interesting to hear if those little things work. Um, they're, they're random things I end up doing if I'm working with weird rhythms you end up just kind of finding yourself sat in traffic, like, oh, I'm doing it again. But it, it, it is all helpful. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Thank you. Thank you for keeping on trying. I mean, that's all anyone can ever ask for. So, um, Sue, you're unmuted. How, how was all of that for you? Because I don't think we've really worked on three twos in that way before. Um, we did a little bit with them, um, <clears throat> with Rusty Gully and... Um... Yeah. Um... <clears throat> But I'm afraid in the last few months I've done very little actually. Uh, well, with moving house and just um, not having anyone else to play with in real life for, for, for so long. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it takes a while and I find I certainly have got it and I'm all happy. And the next minute I've lost it again. Mm -hmm. And so I think you just need to go over it, certainly for me, quite slowly and quite. Yeah keep going at it i wish i'd gone the other way around i wish i'd taught you all the, the, the like the melody of the right hand and then done this stuff later <laughs> but you'll be able to once we've got next time out of the way you'll be able to do it in that order and it might sort of suddenly go oh oh yeah it makes sense now so yeah but i'm sure it, you know i i'm glad to hear this no i'm not being kind of um bashed or anything it is good for, to hear you know that start, sometimes starting with the left hand is a good thing it's what i've done with the other two classes actually so I thought I'd just keep it the same. Um, but I'll remember that for future and sort of give you something to, like a, we can work with the canvas. If we build the canvas, learn the tune, and then we can do stuff with it. And that that's a very good way of going about it as well. So uh, we'll do that. I think, I think too, um, doing the uh, bellows waggle helps. Yeah, it's, 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 it's comes your metronome then. Yeah. Otherwise you're just thinking with your mind, you know, counting or whatever. And I think having that little rhythm that you're physically doing something, it's like dancing. Definitely, yeah. Um, you understand the music, oh, the music bit. Sorry, I've got a frog, in my, a frog in my throat. It's definitely, and it also gives the responsibility of keeping time over to your body. Because mm -hmm. if you can get it to just bob along consistently, mm -hmm. We all make mistakes, that's that, and that's fine. It will happen. But if you can, like, just go, do you know what? I'm going to give that over to you, and you're just going to be over there doing this <laughs> while I'm thinking about other other things I need to be thinking about. Um, so it, that and that can take practice to get into that state. But if you're a dancer, it it is more easy. Um, but if you're not, um, do you dance, Lucy? I don't know if you do. No. no. But I was going to. No. So these random little things of just like bobbing around in the kitchen, just sort of just try and kind of find that beat, just and counting one, two, three, four, five, six, and underline if if you want with the sheet music I I've put up on the um, the zone, I've I've written out that rhythm, and so you can write or underline or highlight the beats that are the big ultimate, you know, where things happen on the left hand. And it's the one, the four and the six. I'll make sure that's actually bolded. I'll, I'll make that happen. Um, and then it's just a matter of just consistently bobbing, but really bobbing on the one, four, six, one, four, six, one. And it's the sixth one. So you've got that double bob in a row that obviously trips over into the next bar. So it pushes you over and that can, you know, just, even if you get the six one, it's like, burr, burr, you know, like a little head bang or something. Um, have some fun with it, you know, try and relax around that rhythm and, and see what comes out of it for you. Um, what you end up playing with, tapping a pen, tapping your teeth. I don't know. 
you'll find something that will just, or you might hear something in nature and you're like, oh, it's a 3 2 hornpipe rhythm, yeah? <laughs> um, you know, just see what ends up happening. Um, Min, what about uh, that for you? That was probably yeah, quite I'm, different. I'm, I'm okay. What I, I, I apologise for not seeing the Barham Down video beforehand and I was just looking back through my emails. Can't find it. Have you put that YouTube onto on the Melodian zo zo Zone? Yeah, yeah. so... My plan, and I was talking about this with the other groups, is just to share things on the zone rather than email them out. So I emailed to say there's something on the zone. And I, I apologise, um, but no. it, it yeah, doesn't. No, that's good. That, that, that's good practice. I'm sure that is. It should be one place and not. Yeah, that's not, what I thought. I mean, I yeah, can yeah, email as well. So you create a virtual learning environment and that's use it. that expression that universities use. So on the zone, we've got your your video, which of course we can slow down to hear the a music. Yeah. And we've got the notes, which I find do help sometimes, if only because it's a matter of going, underlining the one that that's the that's the one, that's the four, that's the six. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So when I press this button, I need to press this button at the same time. That, yeah. It's almost mechanical at that point, isn't it? Yeah, that's great. I yeah. think, so the time, I think everybody will come back and go, oh, wow, I've sort of got a bit of that. Yeah. You, you won't have to teach too much. Because after all, the A, the A music. Uh, melody is there's a very not, simple little body. There's not a lot to it. There? Although there's yeah, a couple of things. Rows, I think, do you? The That's the thing with cross rowing. There's a couple of options, um, yeah, which okay. is what I want. I'll look at that yeah, with you sure, guys next sure, time. Sure. This is always a tight, easy way of doing it and a messy way of doing it, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. As I found out, by the way, with your Asher Laden goes astray. As oh, Askeladden, yeah. Yes, that's been. <laughs> Garotting. It's torturing me for the last week, but I have actually got it, so that's another matter. <laughs> good. Yeah. Um, who else have I spoken to? Um, Richard, I'll come to you, because this might be a bit of a step up from where we were with Halsey, but um, what did it feel like coming back into that? Oh, unmute if you... Let's uh, just ask you to do that. Uh, there we go. Am I unmuted now? You are. Okay. What I, what I like is you play in the line and I can play underneath it with the chords. I, I can pick out the chords quite easily. As I say, I, I don't read the notes. I just like being able to play along with you. Mm. And I think busking along with you playing the top line enables me to actually get, get the thing together. Good. So I do quite enjoy that side of things. That's what I think has been good about learning the left. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Thank you. No, I've enjoyed it today. Thank you very much. Brill. It's nice to see your cabin again as well. <laughs> <laughs> John, how was it for you? Did you, you know, the, the good hand got a, got a workout today? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hang on. Hang on. I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, bless him. Can't hear you, John. You have to unmute. There we go. There we go. Yeah, it's been very good. I've thoroughly enjoyed it and uh, something to work on. Lots to take away, isn't there? Even if it's just, you know, the homework of just feeling that rhythm it's its going to be a bit obscure perhaps but uh, I think you'll get it I, I have high hopes for everyone there's two weeks and it's not it's not a two-week task so just drip feed it into your life in whatever way possible um, right. and the the full video this will be put on um, Vimeo so it will be private only available to watch through the portal but the the video that I shared, the kind of preparation, that's on YouTube, so you, and you'll be able to watch that anywhere. So, um, you know, if you want to keep that tune in your brain, you know, find that link on you. You know, just search on YouTube, Mel Biggs Barham Down, and it will come up. Um, I think there's a couple of different versions actually that I've got up there, speed wise. So, if you mm. want a slow, if you want a fast, if you want just left hand, I might have just done a just left hand video. Um, Yes. So there are various other resources available as well, and I'll chuck them up on the zone so they're all in one place. Yeah, I was going to say for those YouTube ones, Mel, if you could have a look and decide which is the best, the most appropriate. Yeah. You put the URL up, so we're not sort of yeah. No, no, that's that, that's that's what I'll do. I'll put you know them. What I mean, up. just to, just to give a quick link. Yeah. 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 Bro. It's oh, always I nice to have a video at, at at full speed. Yeah. Because then you have in your mind. What it should sound like. Definitely. Yeah, um, and it's also then, it's easier to have the feeling of it, isn't it? You yes, it is. Oh, it clicks at that speed. Okay. 
Um, it, like I say, it's one of the things you have to slow things down to learn them, but there, there is a threshold sometimes where it's like, oh, it's all just kind of disparate, you know, just kind of like moving around in ever increasing circles. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's play, play around with the speed of it because it will that down up feeling will change at a certain speed, you know, when you start to get faster and they generally go at a bit of a pace, three twos. Um, so you know, in a session, if it, if this was being played, it would probably be something like yum ba ba dum da da ba 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 dum da da. So it it becomes very very stabby on the left hand, yeah. But we don't need to go there, you know. It's just it's just to kind of give you an option to play with, I guess, rather than the be all and end all of playing fast. Um, excellent. All right then. Well, I'll wrap up and pause the recording.